In this video, we are going to discuss a couple of other interesting uh, topics around uh, ratio analysis, uh, primarily known as vertical analysis and horizontal analysis. Now, as the name suggests, horizontal goes like this and vertical goes like this. And uh, the analysis of financial statements on both horizontal and vertical front is what uh, becomes an important uh, characteristic of uh, overall ratio analysis that we are looking for a firm, right? Let's uh, take a quick example. If we have a, a PNL statement that says sales for year one and year two are given, sales is let's say 100 in the first year or let's put it as 1000 in the first year and 1150 in the next year costs are at 600 here and costs are let's say at 650 here or 660 here and um, you get profits around it so your vertical analysis assumes that your sales number is 100 and everything falls from there so cost becomes 60 in this case right your uh, horizontal analysis assumes that sales is 100 and next year this becomes 115 cost is 100 and next year cost becomes uh, 110 right because cost uh, increases by 10 percent so effectively uh, your vertical analysis is in a sense a proportion analysis whereas horizontal analysis is in a sense growth analysis when we look at numbers in more detail it will become clearer horizontal uh, analysis assumes that first year in the discussion is at 100 whatever the numbers are and then future years number change over that you're rebasing the numbers for change over the future years right so year one year two year three we are going this way and we are assuming everything in the first year is 100 and we are trying to find out what is the change over the years in those numbers so in a sense this is uh, this is trend analysis right that's a tool used essentially for something like trend analysis vertical analysis on the other hand is like proportion analysis so on the other hand uh, vertical analysis goes like this so in year one you start with 100 and then how do you how do you constitute that 100 60 comes from somewhere 10 comes from somewhere 5 and 5 and the remaining 20 coming from various points how does that 100 get constituted everything else for the PNL it assumes that revenues are rebased at 100 and everything else is a proportion of the revenues while for the balance sheet what does it do it assumes that total liabilities and total assets are 100 and everything that is adding up to bring to these numbers they are calculated as proportions of these right so horizontal analysis and vertical analysis in a very simplistic scenario if we understand what they are we are trying to do either a trend analysis or a proportion analysis right now let's uh, let's try and uh, do this on our company under discussion which is Aisher Motors uh, same model same uh, data that we had put in for the last three years we're going to do this analysis based on that so let's uh, look at our uh, company under discussion. We have the last three years data, CAGRs calculated. We've added a couple of sheets to this file. It's called vertical analysis and horizontal analysis first on the PNL. Then ahead of the balance sheet, we've put a file called vertical analysis and horizontal analysis on the balance sheet, right? Now let's first do the vertical analysis for both the both the PNL and the balance sheet, right? Remember under vertical analysis, we have to assume sales to be rebased to 100 and in this particular case what we'll do is we can take any of the sales measures as 100 we can take revenue from operations as sales but I'm going to take 100 as total revenue here so all this is going to become 100 and we're going to do the analysis based on proportions of this 100 over and below this right so in terms of simple straightforward calculation on this on the PNL, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 100 here, I'm going to put 100 here, and I'm going to put 100 here, right? Now, everything else is basically a proportion of this number, right? So I, I basically rebase the number and multiply that data with 100, right? So how do I calculate revenue from operations? So I go to the PNL, I take that particular year's revenue, I divide it by the total revenue number correct and I multiply this with the hundred that is here and we find that revenue from operations is actually hundred and seven right now when I drag these down I don't want the row of hundred to change neither do I want the row of 
total revenue to change right so what do I do I go into this and I freeze this B11 and I freeze this to B12 correct that's what I do and I can actually drag this down now so when I drag this down effectively we find that net revenue from operations is 98 other income is 2 combined they give total revenue right gross revenue was actually 107 but out of that 9 got paid out as as uh, as uh, excise duty right let's relook at what did we do we basically calculated what is going to be the number 6995 into 100 why did we do that is because we are assuming that this number here is going to be 100 so to calculate what this number if 6527 is equal to 100 then 1 is equals to 100 by 6527 and 6995 is equals to 100 by 6527 into 6995 simple mathematics is what we have done right and that's the calculation this this calculation here is the same as this calculation here that's what we are doing now Remember that in all our calculations, if we are doing 6995 by 6527 into 100, remember which two terms are fixed. This is fixed and this is fixed. They are not moving for that particular year. They will only move when I move to the next year. Correct? So I have to freeze the row and not the column. I have to freeze the row for both of these numbers I'm not freezing the column because uh, when I drag it on the right side I want it to move correct so let's quickly redo this once again I have put in 100 here I will delete this we are going to calculate on the PNL 6995 divided by 6527 every number divided by that year's sales and we are going to freeze the row but not the column and multiply this number with this hundred and again freeze the row but not the column and press enter drag it down we find our data drag it on the right we'll find our data again right that solves the problem we can actually go down here now and start calculating all these numbers as well so you see cost of material is 61 56 55 keep dragging it down total operational expense comes as 89 88 86 i can uh, reformat this uh, using the earlier data points so that it appears in the shaded green control C control V control V I can keep calculating all these data points and similarly all I need to do is copy any of the rows and paste it in depreciation paste it in interest paste it in taxes Right, and paste it in minority interest so effectively what is this analysis telling us let's decode this a little bit let's look at the year 2014 if the company made sales of 100 rupees if the company made sales of 100 rupees the costs were 55 rupees for material 11 for purchase of stock in trade 14 for other expenses total operational expense out of 100 was 86 we work to EBITDA of 13. Why is this 13? Is because it does not include other income. So 99, which is here, 99 minus uh, minus this 13 is going to minus 86 is going to give me 13, right? Then I get depreciation and amortization, which is two out of those hundred rupees, and EBITDA EBIT is 10, interest is zero because there's no debt. We go down further we look at uh, what's going to be the number on uh, pat and then from there minority interest goes out pat after minority interest comes at seven assuming sales were 100 total revenue was 100 total profit was seven so this is what vertical analysis is it will effectively show us that margins are increasing so that's a proportion analysis it will effectively tell us that net profit margins are also increasing it will effectively tell us that uh, cost of material is actually going down as a proportion of sales we've done nothing but found out all the all the line items all the all the rows on the PL as proportion of total revenue that's all we have done in vertical analysis here let's do the same for the balance sheet as well right now in the balance sheet remember we're going to put total liabilities as 
100 for each of the years. So I'm going to do a control C and control V. Now everything else is going to be calculated the same way. So if I have to calculate share capital, that's nothing but on the balance sheet share capital divided by my total liabilities fro frozen to freeze the row multiplied by 100 here, which is again frozen to freeze the row and we get one. Right, I can drag it on the right side, I can drag it here, I can drag it below, and this becomes zero purely as a proportion, right? So when I do this, it will not become zero. We are doing, remember, proportion analysis at this point of time, and we do vertical data points. C, Alt, yes, let's copy and paste the formula so that the, the data stays intact, the formatting stays intact. Now I will copy this and paste this on long-term borrowings and all the other data points as well. We'll do it on minority interest as well. We will do it on short-term borrowing, etc. as well. And then we're going to copy this so that the formatting of the green shaded data stays where it is for total non-current liabilities, control V and total current liabilities this. So we see the proportion of current liabilities has gone up over the years. We find that earlier out of 100 rupees, 35 rupees were current liabilities. Now 30, almost 39 rupees is current liabilities. Uh, total uh, ratio of shareholder funds kind of stays intact in overall equity. Minority interest share goes down, right? Rest of it is kind of uh, negligible. The long-term liabilities are negligible. Similarly for assets, we assume total assets are going to be 100 and we're going to do the same analysis for total assets as well. So tangible assets, for example, will become tangible assets of that year divided by total assets of that year, freeze so that the row gets frozen and multiply by the 100 that we had put in in the total assets column and freeze again so that the row gets frozen, right? Drag it on the right drag it down, do a control C, we can, so we're going to do a control C and paste this as formulas, we're going to do a control C, paste all these numbers here, similarly paste all these numbers here as well, and paste this as formulas here. So we find the proportion of current assets has gone down and the proportion of fixed assets has gone up over the years in, in the company's uh, balance sheet, right? That's the analysis uh, on the vertical analysis front. How we will use it will come a little bit later, but at this point of time, we're primarily using it as a as a sort of a uh, proportion analysis for, for the each of the years, right? Now, when we do horizontal analysis, what happens is we just put 100 in the first year for everything. So everything becomes 100. So I'm going to copy this and paste it across all the cells. And whichever is not green, I'm going to put that as 100. Right, so that's all 100 done. Then I'm going to put 100 in each of the green ones as well. So copy this and keep pasting this 100 everywhere. So now the first year is 100 and we're going to do trend analysis. How have the numbers moved across the years? Now the analysis changes on the right side. Essentially, we will have to keep the column uh, as, uh, as what is uh, frozen in our analysis, right? So let's see revenue from operations. If first year is 100, we are going to divide this by column one, and this column one will become frozen now. When I drag it on the right side, I want it to be divided by the first column and not the next one. But when I drag it down, I want the, the number to change. And I multiply this with this 100. Once again, the column being frozen, not the row, remember, right? So that's 106. When I drag it ahead, you will note that this is still multiplying by 100, PNLD6, 
and there's a big jump in profit when compared to the first year and that's why that becomes 134 right drag it down drag it all the way down then we can do the formatting once again or let's actually drag it down slowly so that we don't get the divide by zero errors other income has gone down we'll paste this as formulas here we'll paste it here we will paste all of it here and here and here so that's a sort of a growth analysis for the company and I'm going to now take this set here and paste the major headers as well so what's happened to EBITDA what's happened to the growth rate in PAT and PAT after minority interest so you'll see EBITDA has more than doubled 100 became 203 over these two years if we started with 100 on everything what is the yearly growth so first year we grew by 6% the next year the growth was much higher even in total revenue first year six next year much higher EBITDA first year was about 30% the next year was close to about 50% after that right so there is a bigger chunk of growth that has come in the second year and this gives us an idea primarily on where is the growth coming from right when you look at cost of material that was that actually fell in the first year went up in the second year but not as much as some of the other headers went up right and that's why you see the operating margin jumping up minority interest went down you have interest component which was 100 became double of that that's because the headers are uh, minuscule that doesn't really matter too much now this has to be viewed horizontally I cannot compare I cannot compare directly uh, a number like 250 with 233 I have to compare it like this right that's why it's called horizontal analysis this on the other hand has to be compared like this that's vertical analysis for us right let's quickly do the hor horizontal analysis bit in uh, in the balance sheet as well so if we go to the balance sheet and do horizontal analysis here we're going to put 100 here everywhere and I'm going to embolden this and I'm going to copy this 100 paste it here paste it here and also paste this hundred here so everything is hundred in the first year and I'm going to see the growth of these in subsequent years as we go along right so how does this hundred move ahead in subsequent years is what we are going to look at everything is hundred in the first year let's quickly freeze this done now we're going to see the growth rate so again balance sheet 27 divided by 27 frozen to freeze the column but not the row and multiplied by 100 again frozen to freeze the column but not the row freeze F but not 8 right drag it on this side drag it down obviously share capital does not change Control C, paste as formulas, embolden it. Right now we can just do a simple Control C, Control V, select this Control V. This is divided by zero because the numbers are zero, so we don't really need to calculate it. Control C, do all this. Some of the data points may not make too much sense in the case of the balance sheet, especially on the horizontal analysis front again these numbers are zero so we don't really worry too much about them control C paste all the numbers here as well to control V and embolden it we will copy this and we just do a simple control C control V on everything right we find the total balance sheet growth has been 43 percent over the two years total current liabilities have actually become bigger as a proportion uh, grown 58 percent shareholder funds have grown 43 percent 
and uh, non current liabilities have grown uh, 67% essentially whereas total assets have grown by 82% over this period 100 becoming 182 and sh current assets short term assets have not g grown as much which might actually not be a bad thing for the company right that's horizontal analysis for us that's how we go about doing horizontal analysis and vertical analysis for any company important stuff to understand that vertical analysis just to quickly reiterate this is trend analysis and this is broadly proportion analysis that's all that we need to remember that's how we go about doing horizontal and vertical analysis that's it in this particular section